Hell is a state of consciousness. What is hell? Hell is living in desire. People in hell want water. See, we thought it was just hot. No, what is hot? Hot means living in desire and experiencing a fire that can't be quenched. Hell is living in want. Why will you live in want? Oh! Because the Lord is not your shepherd. Because when the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. Oh, that's good stuff. So consciousness brings you now into a place where you learn to have the fulfillment of that desire on the inside of you and you don't chase the material fulfillment because that out here does not fulfill what fulfills is coming into the fullness here mm. Mm. there's been a million years in one i know that i was i was just talking to a very successful young man today very successful he didn't even know he was successful and <laughs> he didn't that was the problem He's like, I'm never going to be content. I said, that's because you're comparing yourself to Jay-Z. I said, the Bible says he to compare is not wise. I said, you're so successful and you don't even realize it. I said, you're walking around in want. And then I went into the heated half. I did this whole lesson today for about an hour just driving, trying to teach somebody that you can't walk around in want, man. And he couldn't get it. And he has maybe a million dollars, beautiful home. And he's just looking at the rest of these people saying he has to have more, which lets me know there's many millionaires that are in want. Mm. Yes, a lot of millionaires. There's billionaires that are in want. And see, sometimes it don't even have to be the want of a thing. It could be a want of power, a want of status. You have a lot of people that are multimillionaires and can buy anything, but now they want status. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. And that's why you got to get into consciousness. And when you get into consciousness, consciousness, you begin to start to find that fulfillment that comes only from God from within. Don't chase what's out here. Out here. See, out here is the illusion. If Come you start on. chasing what's out here, Esau, you're going to lose your birthright. Yes. Um, it was so funny how when Bishop said um, at, the, at the prophetic conference, he said to my, myself, my husband, he turned to us and he said, your house is sold, your house is sold now. And he did, we took it off the market and everything. We wasn't chasing it anymore. And we just got a call today. He said, someone wants to buy your property. It wasn't on, it's not for sale right now. But he said, someone wants to buy your property. And as much as we were chasing and chasing, we got to sell this house. We got to do this. We got to do this. And then it just, we just stopped and Come rest on, in God. As we just laid in God's cradle, uh. the call came to us. And you know, the thing was, and the thing of the matter is that, and then you know what I said to her? I said, huh, maybe, maybe not. I said, I don't know. Right. That's exactly what I said. And I hung up the phone and I said, did I really say that? And, and that's just how I felt because I've never, we've never been so blessed. We've been just given and given and given and given. And we've never been so blessed. That's powerful. Because we listened to the master prophet for that house yes. from the beginning. You know, I like what Demetrius Johnson put in the chat room. He says, don't chase the want, but let the fulfillment become your I am God. See, as long as you chase the want, you're never going to get it. The only thing want creates is more want. Woo! I want everybody to write that get down. Get out of want! The only thing want creates is more want. Gotta, man, that's powerful stuff. Yes. The only thing want creates is more want. It comes after its kind. You know, I was reading something and talking about the waiter. You just become the waiter. And I said, a minute ago, I was telling the guy, I said, a minute ago you was waiting for this moment, now you're waiting for another moment. And when you get to Hawaii, you're going to be wondering what the next thing is. It's just an ongoing thing. Don't become a waiter. Right. Because you keep, <laughs> you keep, robbing your gift, which is the present, Woo! by staring in the future. Mm, looking at the future. Looking at the future. When, in reality, we all go back to the future because your future is in your past, I, John, saw. Oh, your future already happened, you just don't know it. But you keep being robbed of it 
because you keep living in a time that is not. Yes, Classmaster Jordan. Yes, Master Prophet, as you talk um, about want, and um, Prophet Shelves talk about how she rests in God. You know, the scripture came to me saying, be anxious for nothing. Oh, mm -hmm. be anxious for nothing. Yes, a matter of fact, when we begin to look at that verse of scripture, and I, and I love that, be anxious for nothing. Because see, God don't want you filled with anxiety. Oh, Amen. I love it. And when you start to understand that God wants you fulfilled, you're going to see some things that's getting ready to happen in your lives that's going to just uh, take you into a whole nother resting place in God. But um, when you begin to understand, I, I want to find that scripture where it says, be anxious for nothing. Um, I believe it's in Philippians. And um, because see, God don't want you um, God, God don't want you in desire um, a matter of fact, let me just give you Philippians 4, 6. It says, be careful for nothing. Mm, be don't be, be don't, get, get, get rid of being full of care. Yeah. That's why when people say to me, <laughs> be careful, I say, no, thank you. <laughs> I wonder what she was saying to me. No, thank you. She's telling you to be careful. I'm not going to be full of care. <laughs> I'm going to be full of faith. Be, the Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And so, and then in the NIV version, it says, do not be anxious about anything. God don't want you living in anxiety. He don't want you living in worry. Worry is not the will of God concerning me. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Holding and beholding. Begin reading there at the top. Holding and beholding. What am I holding and beholding in my consciousness? See, what am I holding and beholding here? What am I holding and beholding in my consciousness? Because, see, you're holding something here and beholding something here. Because, see, whatever you're beholding, you're holding. Whoa, what are you, at? you are being that holdings. Oh. What are your holdings? Your holdings are what you are beholding. Jesus. If you behold it, you're holding it. Yes. Mm. Oh. Gotta put stuff that's why you've got to make sure you like what you're beholding. That's Sometimes you got to look at the people around you and say, am I really feeling you? Mm -hmm. Am I feeling this room I'm in? If you don't like where you're living, change it. Don't live there. Yes. Change it. You can start to change it. You change it in your thought. It changes here. Read the next point. What do I have in my consciousness at this moment? See, analyze your consciousness. What is in my mind at this moment? Let me see. Am I thinking happy thoughts? Am I happy in, my, in this moment? Yes, I am. Mm. Can, I be, can I be happy in this moment? Yes, I can be happy in this moment. Are you enjoying the moment? I love this moment. Why kill this moment by looking at what you don't have and start staring in the future? There's no better moment than this moment. I can't find what I'm looking for. There's no better moment than this moment. And it won't be. Exactly. And that's where you've got to get in consciousness. And then, would I like to evolve from this moment? Yes, I'm ready to evolve from this moment. What is that? I am now thinking, <laughs> I am this. Are you mad with it? No. Why? Because I just got it. Wow. Well, I don't see it. 
I'm not 